Hello, Year 5. Happy uh, New Week. Good to see you again. Hope you are well. Today we are going to be asking this question. How do Christians deal with the reality of war? So we looked two lessons ago at pacifists. Uh, pacifists being, of course, people who don't believe in war, people who oppose war, people who don't believe in violence. Uh, they wouldn't go to war. So uh, maybe later, maybe in year seven or year eight, you'll get to look at conscientious objectors. So that's Christians uh, who decided that they didn't want to go to war even when they were forced to go to war. However, there are plenty of Christians who, last lesson we looked at just war theory, uh, come up with a way of explaining when war is sometimes the least worst option. Um, and today we're going to look at Christians who actually choose to go into the military, into the army, the navy, the air force, uh, in order to become chaplains. But we need to find out what chaplain is, so let's have a look at that. Many Christians struggle with the question of whether war is right or wrong. Some feel the right thing to do is to join the military and fight to defend their country. For those Christians, the military employs chaplains who are priests who help Christians to face the reality of war. And there are other chaplains. There are Muslim chaplains, Jewish chaplains. Uh, there are even humanist chaplains who don't believe in God at all. So uh, we're just going to look at Christian chaplains because we're looking at how Christians respond to war. But there are other faith chaplains as well. Today we're going to learn about what they do and why. And here are two military chaplains. Um, this guy here is out in the war zone uh, and he's performing a service with some soldiers there reading from the Bible. And this guy here, he's uh, in a church, but you can see that he's wearing the military outfit uh, of the army. He's getting prepared and ready to go out to fight, uh, well, not to fight, but to be there for people who are fighting. There have been priests involved in military life for many hundreds of years. Here, a Christian priest is blessing a group of soldiers about to be sent to war in the US Navy in 1944. And it's 1944, so we know this is the Second World War. Um, and this is because all of these people would have been Christians. Their faith was very important to them. And yet they were going out to fight in the war. So the blessing from a priest would have been a very important uh, thing to protect them over the next few days and weeks uh, as they uh, face some really horrendous challenges. War is absolutely horrible. I mean, I'm sure you realise that anyway, but some of the realities of war are very difficult. So having a priest there to help especially if you're a Christian, or as I say, Jewish or Muslim person, then it's really important. The British military has chaplains that represent many different religions, including Christianity, Sikhism, Indo Islam and Judaism. They are found in the army, air force and navy. So here is uh, the Jewish chaplain to the army. Here's a Sikh chaplain to, I think that's the navy, or the air force, no, it's the air force. Um, and here you can see this is the Roman Catholic chaplain to the army. So there are lots of different uh, types of chaplains found in the military. Okay, so here's some reading. You've actually got the reading here in front of you as well. Uh, this is from a news article published in The Guardian a couple of years ago. Uh, UK chaplains in Afghanistan, uh, ordinary priests with an extraordinary flock. And uh, that term flock just means a group of people who are Christians. So with their camouflage Bibles and combat crosses, the force's 278 chaplains are outsiders in the church and the military. We're going to read together. Um, unfortunately, I'm blocking off this section of text here. So if you want to read together, you're going to have to use the copy that's in your booklet. The Reverend James Francis was traveling in an armored vehicle north of the Bowery Desert in Afghanistan accompanying the Brigade Re Reconnaissance Force during the stopping and searching of vehicles for insurgents, when a Royal Marine interrupted his chat with a gunner to ask if it was right to kill. That was a direct question, says the Padre. Padre is another word for military chaplain, for the 30 commando. So he's the chaplain for this particular group of military. But it's quite normal for these things to occur to people out here, and it's vital that when difficult decisions are being made, we have direct answers. That, as Christians, we don't retreat into some kind of holy huddle. Camp Bastion and other British military bases in Afghanistan hold vigils overseen by padres such as Francis to commemorate those who died. So a vigil is a time, uh, it might be overnight sometimes, where you just sit in silence and pray for people who've died. 
These have, become to, these have come to represent the formal face of collective worship here, but much of the work of the chaplains is in smaller gatherings, perhaps over a cup of tea. The men and women are forced to deal with the morality uh, sorry, let me say it again. The men and women are forced to deal with the mortality at a far younger age than most of their civilian peers. So what that's saying is that people in the army have to deal with death uh, much more face to face than maybe people in other lines of work. For when you need someone to pray with is the motto of the dedicated military telephone prayer line. Combat crosses. Wherever the UK forces are, padres will be found. They have military and medical training, but no weapons. The tools of their trade are camouflage colour Bibles, and we uh, they wear combat crosses, small metallic discs with a punched out cross, alongside the standard military issue dog tags, bearing their name, surname, blood type, service number and religion. Okay, so Padre, as you can see here, is another word for military chaplain or uh, priest. And that gives you some idea of what it's like to be a Padre in the army. Lots of people wanting to talk to you and ask you questions. You also have to be prepared to do these vigils for people who might die. And you have to be prepared to deal with death. Uh, death happens a lot in war. There's no way to get around that. It's a, it's a big part, unfortunately, of what it means to go to war. So, before we answer these questions in our booklet, let's have a look at this. This is a sort of time for us to pause, think, and if we were together, we'd be able to discuss this, but obviously this is something you'll have to think about on your own. Both the Qua these Quakers, so these are some Quakers, and this British military chaplain are Christians. They believe in what the Bible says, and they try to live by it. The Quakers are pacifists who believe that war is wrong and violence is always bad. The military chaplain believes war is sometimes necessary, and is a member of the armed forces. What might they agree on? What might they disagree on? And who might be right? So have a pause, have a think. What do you think these Christians and this Christian will agree on? What do you think these Christians will say to this Christian who believes war might sometimes be right? What is this Christian perhaps going to say to these two about who believe that war is never right? And who in your own opinion do you think might be right or do you think both of them could be right or both of them could be wrong so pause think see where you land and let's have a look at the last slide okay even though people may share a religion they can still have very different views on the world around them when we think about religions and religious people we must realize that although they might have the same books and rules religious people read and interpret them in different ways that's really important actually for RE just for the next however long you're going to be in school now uh, 5, uh, 12, sorry uh, 7, 8, 9 years you're going to be in school for another 9 years to bear this in mind when you're studying RE that not all religious people agree that within every single church every single mosque, every single synagogue every single gurdwara there are going to be religious people who disagree with each other people who read the Bible, the Quran uh, in different ways it's never simple and straightforward. So today's booklet work uh, is based on the article that you've got in your books there. It says what services do, it should say it says two, but it just says, should say what services do military chaplains offer and how might these be good or helpful for Christian soldiers? Full sentences please, year five. You are more than capable of that, I'm sure. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, enjoy if you have nice weather. I will see you next week. We're going to do a reading lesson next week, so it's only going to be a short video from me. Um, yeah, have a great week. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.